When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like breakup R and B intense. I thought you said you love the sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. Just go to Geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a gift receipt. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to another edition. Um, today we have Chris Daly. He is a um, famous blogger on Jamaicans.com. So if you go to blogs.jamaican.com backslash me thinking, he's also a, um, a, the owner of consumerswin.com. Take it away, Chris. Thank you, Janice. I'm very pleased this evening to introduce and welcome Mr. Simeon Kerr, a renowned CPA from Chicago, and he'll be sharing some of his wisdom around this tax season. Simeon Kern was born in Hanover, Jamaica, and he attended Russell's High School. He came to the U.S. in 1979, and there he went on to attend La Jolla University in Chicago, where he received his MBA and has been a certified CPA since 1986. Siemens career started out in the corporate America, then in government, and then he has a public practice. He founded S.J. Kerr Limited Certified Public Accountants in 1995, which is based in Illinois. His specialization is taxation, audits, business valuation, financial and estate planning. It's my indeed pleasure to welcome Mr. Simeon Kerr. Welcome, so let's everyone. get started, Simeon. Hi. And, um, you know, some folks may not think they need a services CPA, given the advent of software such as TurboTax, and they're taking charge of their tax preparation. Why should folks consider the services of CPA in addressing their tax needs? That is indeed a good question. Um, First of all, folks have to ask themselves a couple of questions. Do I understand my taxes? Is it complicated or is it simple? Uh, if it's complicated, well, you probably will need a CPA or a certified public accountant. If it's simple, you probably will get by on TurboTax and save yourself some money. However, there are certain things that you've got to consider as well. Uh, with a professional looking at your taxes, they may direct you to certain areas where you could save money. For example, if you have a business, you do need a CPA because the accounting aspect of it is not just for the layman. We're trained accountants. We're trained professionals. We're required to do continuing professional education every year. So we're on top of things. You may not be on top of things, but if you can do your taxes, save yourself some money, and you may just want to do it yourself and have a CPA or enroll agent review it. That's Thank pretty you. Much One of the questions that have always puzzled me, and I, I know uh, a professional like yourself would be able to give some enlightenment, is the difference between a tax cut and a tax credit. There's a, there's a wide difference. A tax credit for example, uh, what it does, it's an offset against your taxes. It can reduce your taxes. A tax cut is a little different. I'll talk about a tax cut first. Uh, tax cut. For, currently, we've got about, uh, what is it, about uh, six different tax brackets, and it runs anywhere from 15% to 35%. If you reduce the tax rate, then you're having a tax cut. On the other hand, a tax credit, for example, 
it's an adjustment to your taxes. And you've got two types of tax credit, essentially. One that's referred to as a non-refundable credit. The other is a refundable credit. Uh, a, refund, a refundable credit, I'll explain what that is. It's, for example, earned income credit. It can uh, generate a refund for you even though you don't owe any taxes. But then the, ref the non-refundable credit, uh, for example, a HOPE credit or a lifetime learning credit, it cannot reduce your taxes below zero. So that's pretty much the difference between a tax cut and a tax credit. A tax credit is a lot more valuable than a tax cut because it can put money back into your pocket. So those are the, that's the one you want, a tax credit rather than a tax cut. Well, thank you for enlightening us on that point, because one of the issues that people are debated is the recently passed stimulus plan here in the U.S., and what kind of implication you see that happening on the average taxpayer, be it Jamaican or otherwise. The tax package that was passed by the Congress uh, in February, I think it's around February 17th, yes. it's pretty comprehensive. There's something in it for all Americans, including Jamaican Americans. And some of the main points of that bill, uh, it's a $787,000 piece of legislation, and it provides tax breaks for individuals, for families, for workers, first-time home buyers, college students, new car buyers, it gives a um, tax break to lower-income family, and some specifics in terms of uh, uh, how we will benefit uh, as um, working people. We'll talk about that first. Uh, there is a you can make an adjustment uh, for. You're, let's let's talk about unemployment, for example. Uh, unemployment, uh, people are laid off, and uh, sometimes they're saddled with a tax bill at the end of the year, so unknowingly, for example. But what it, what it has done, what this new um, bill has done for us is that it reduces your the amount that you've got to start paying unemployment on, for example. Uh, if I remember correctly, the first $2,400 of unemployment income is no longer taxable. So you will not okay. start paying taxes on your unemployment unless it exceeds $2,400. First time home buyers, this is good. Uh, in the last bill, there is a $750 first time home buyer credit which had to be paid back. But if you buy a house between January 1st, 2009 and November 30th, 2009, you can get up to $8,000 as a first-time home buyer. And the, the good thing, Chris, is that you don't have to pay that back. Amen. That should help stimulate the housing market, which is being hit so severely. Yes, and there's also things in it for uh, new car buyers, too. Um, normally, the um, tax that you pay on the car would not be deductible unless you're taking the sales tax. But this time, even if you don't itemize, you can t deduct that credit up to $2,400. Okay. So, so most that's, people that's are going to pay about $13 per month in their paycheck. Is that? Uh, please, I didn't, I didn't get the first part. I was talking I've while you were talking. I've seen news stories saying that the average person should like, expect about $13 per month in their paycheck. It's either per month or per week. Yeah, it's uh, somewhere around uh, $13 per month in their paycheck, per week, the, as the average person, 13 or 14. I don't have the number specifically. Okay. One of the places where there could be some tax implications are for the nonprofit folks here in the U.S. in the diaspora who um, who help um, folks back in Jamaica. 
what can they do about can they do in preparing their origination to get ready for filing to take advantage of um, the tax laws? The primary thing is to keep good records. Uh, for example, uh, questions you've got to ask, did the organization engage in activity not previously reported to the IRS? Were any changes made to the corporate organizational structure? Uh, did the organization start paying fringe benefits? Those are things that have to be disclosed. Did they sponsor any of the following retirement plans and so forth? They've got to list all the directors and the key employees of the corporation. Those are things that has to be disclosed. So when you're preparing your Form 990, which is the return that's prepared annually and it's due in May, uh, you've got to keep good accounting records. You need a balance sheet. And on the income statement, just like regular business, and inclusive in that balance sheet, you would include... The, uh, your debts, the borrower's name, if you own land or equipment for investment purposes, you've got to disclose them. If you hold securities, you've got to disclose that. Your accountant or your tax preparer would like to see that. Uh, you need to have a listing of all the contributors, uh, special fundraising events. Those things have to be disclosed written acknowledgement of donor of uh, over $250,000. Do you provide that? It's not 250000 I said $250 or more. Uh, those are essentially little details that um, people fail to take advantage of or, or record. Those are the things that um, people usually don't do, and they come to their, their tax preparer. They pre pre prepare my 990. And they don't have these things, and we've got to send them back. And you know, you said that the filing date is in May as opposed to April for most, for the regular taxpayer. Yes, so that's an extra month grace period. And another thing they've got to comply is with their state uh, filing reg regulation because um, the fact that you filed your tax return it doesn't mean that you're compliant with the state. Because um, every state uh, is different, and the laws are different, and the filing requirements with the state is different, and they've got to make sure that um, your charter or your sanction is not expired. I hope folks have took advantage of that comprehensive checklist that you just shared with us. I'd like to talk a little about um, the housing issues that folks are faced with, as we know, we've seen across the country, um, in some of the states where there are a lot of Jamaicans, like in Florida, uh, abundance of home foreclosures. How can, when folks are filing, should they have been unfortunate to have suffered a home foreclosure, what can they do as far as um, at least maximizing their benefits as far as preparing their taxes? Any ideas? you'd like to share with them? Uh, it, it would be nice if I could tell you that they would be able to deduct their losses since these people are at such disadvantage. But I can't. You cannot deduct losses on the sale of personal residence. However, uh, that being the case, uh, they've got to be mindful of um, uh, scammers out there. They've got distressed mortgages, and um, people will take advantage of them. But uh, in terms of uh, what they can do, uh, in terms of deducting mortgage payments and so forth, those things are not deductible. Once you foreclose, you cannot deduct. Right. Okay. So you and have the only thing that would be you avoid the, the getting scammed with these um, these opportunists. Yeah, before I answer your question, the only thing that would be deductible would be the regular things that they've paid, such as their mortgage interest and their property taxes. And okay. uh, back to your question, scammers, what they generally will do sometimes, um, they know that these people have distressed property. So they'll look in the public record and they'll find these homes and they'll stick uh, 
flyers in the door that they're going to rescue you. Knight in shine, you know, armor, of course. But um, people have to be leery because they could be signing away, away their houses because um, some of the things that happen is um, I've heard stories where people were promised that they're going to be released of their mortgage and they're going to be re- the house is going to be rented back to them. And once uh, they are in a position to pay, the scammer will sell it back to them. But what a scammer generally will do, they'll set the um, rent payment so high, and then eventually they'll um, turn the people out of the house. They'll evict them, and you lose your home, including the equity that you had in there. So they've got to be extremely careful about these um, res- so-called rescuers. And it's a time when they're very vulnerable, so they've got to be careful. Go with their head and not their heart. I I never even thought of that. We also saw this past week here in the U.S. that uh, a new budget that has lots of tax implication um, was forwarded. Um, As folks look forward into the next tax season um, as they prepare, what are some of the ideas that you'd like to um, alert them to? Because one of the things that people should do is keep good records, um, be on top of their investments especially. And if we're going, we're going back to the um, tax bill, they should also take advantage. If you're going to buy a house, uh, there is a limit as to when you, uh, you should buy. You should buy between January 1st at November 30th, 2009, because that's the period when you can get that home buyer's credit of $8,000, which you didn't have to pay, which you don't have to pay back as in the case of the old rule. So if you're going to buy a house or a car, it's an ideal opportunity to do so. But uh, in the end, I would advise people to maintain good records uh make estimated payments if you're self employed because at the end of the year uh, if you're filing a schedule c which is where the self employed file you've got to be extremely careful because you can be saddled with a huge tax bill plus interest and penalty because you did not pay enough in during the during the year okay i'd advise them to get a cpa yeah and that's that that's a benefit that's one of the um up, positive if you have a CPA. If you own a business, you should not do your taxes yourself. This, this is just my advice to all of you. Turbo tax will not help you if you do own your business because some you need if someone to eyeball it, a professional to eyeball it and um, help you with the deductions. For example, um, things that are ordinary and necessary, the average person wouldn't spot it. But if you have a CPA, pay the extra money. Uh, or an en- enrolled agent. Um, they're good. Uh, they're sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury to do taxes and uh, whoever Who you're comfortable with. an enrolled with. agent? An enrolled agent. They're the only ones that are um, only tax preparers. You know, tax preparers, there's a lot of them out there. There's right. Essentially, there are three ta- types of tax preparers that are... Uh, Sanctioned or approved to practice before the IRS. They can represent you before the IRS. One is an enroll agent, the other is a CPA or an attorney. And there are a couple of ca- other categories such as actuary, actuaries and a few more. But uh, those are the primary three that can represent you before the IRS. So the folks average, like at HR and our block would be would fall into this category? Not the person up front that's preparing your taxes. But H&R Block do have people that are enroll agents um, and also CPAs and also attorneys. But those are not the ones you will meet when you go there to prepare your taxes, unless it's complicated or complex. Okay. One of the places that that, um, folks struggle, especially if they have kids in college, the kids are part-time at home, part-time in school, and their age is such that they are not um, deductions anymore. What advice um, do you give to both parents and students that can maximize the the tax benefits for both? Well, as long as they're in school, uh, full-time up to age 24, there are deductions. 
And um, as far as maximizing uh, those, uh, maximizing your deduction and those kids that are at home, um, make sure they're in school. And, if um, they're in school but they're working and they, they file their taxes, do you can still claim them as an exemption? It depends because you may be doing them a disservice. Uh, it depends on the income that they're making. And uh, you want to make sure that, um, but if you're providing more than half the support to that child, and it's a, then the child is a dependent. But you would not want to prevent them from working if they can uh, more or less generate more income that can support or alleviate some of the responsibilities that you have as head of household. Okay. For the for those kids in that same category, um, usually they're coming into the independence. What are some of the habits that you would um, like to share with them to start building uh, a sensitivity to paying taxes and managing their monies through tax their tax bills? One of the things I suggest is that um, mom and dad should not take the W two and um, to a tax preparer and do it. They should have the kid take the W-2, do it himself, or take it as a tax preparer. Just have them uh, be cognizant of the fact that they've got to be responsible for their own taxes. And um, one other one other thing that we should we also see young parents do for their young folks is that um, if they have a tax balance due, the parents will pay it. Even if uh, you should also let the kid or the child pay it because um, it may, teaches them to be responsible and it shows them that uh, when they get into the real world, they will be responsible and mom and dad won't be there to hold their hands. And the point that I also want to highlight is that there are certain credits, hope credits and lifetime learning credits for, um, that parents can take advantage of with the kids that are in school. And one good thing is that the HOPE credit, it was normally uh, for the first two years of college, but the, under the new tax bill, or if you want to prefer the stimulus bill, this credit lasts for four years now. Okay. And it's called the HOPE credit? Yes. Okay. Another category of people that we have as I got a question from is uh, for those who are in common law situations and uh, how can they um, maximize the deduction rule for, for themselves? Okay, are you talking about people that are living together and right, they're not without, married, right? not legally married. Okay. This comes in uh, where if, say, for example, you've got a significant other that you're living with and you've got a child with that person and they're both your dependents, you can take both of them as dependents. You could file as head of household. And if it's a minor child, you can take advantage of the child tax credits as well. So all is not lost. Okay. <laughs> you still have the deductions. But if, if, say, for example, both of you are working, you cannot file a, a joint return because you're not married, you've got to file a separate return. And separate if return, okay. Yeah, uh, and if, could it be or the head of household? or uh, the, the parent who is, if you've got one child, the parent who is taking the child could file as a head of household, but the other parent could not. On the other hand, if you've got two children, uh, one could take one and one could take the other, and thus both of them could, should, could file as head of household. Thank you. Um, one thing, thing I'm noticing is um, that some states, special states in deep financial trouble, like California, I think um, Missouri or Kansas, they are deferring at the state level the tax refunds that they're giving to folks. Um, other states may actually slip into this kind of situation given the um, economic situation we're in. Is there anything folks can do now to adjust their deductions, not to um, be in a refund deficit with their state? Well, there's not much that uh, individuals can do. I know um, California, you mentioned, had that problem, and I think they passed the budget right now. 
However, uh, what I would advise folks is that they should file early because refunds are uh, distributed on a FIFO basis. That means first in, first out. So you put yourself in f at the head of the line if you file early. And uh, most state pay interest will pay you interest if the f refund is delayed over 45 days. So all is not lost. There's some benefits there too, and if that is too, not too much consolation, to, you know. Uh, but you can also get on your legislatures if the but if it's a budget situation and um, urge them to pass the budget, your governor and uh, all the um, legislatures. That's pretty much all we can do. There's not much uh, individuals can do, and. Um, Wish I could give you um, <laughs> some better advice in this area. Well, you've you've been a, a, a world of uh, great insights, uh, Simeon. I would like to ask you one final question. I, I give I, you, as I said, you've been very um, full of good content and sharing with us tonight. Thank if you. If someone very kind. listening to this call would like to um, retain you for your service, how's the best way of contacting you? Well, there are two primary ways, of course, uh, uh, email or phone. My phone okay. number, I'll give you that first. It's 847-676-8686. Or you can send an email. You can send it to CPA, that's C as in Charles, P as in Paul, A as in Albert, at SJK, LTD. Dot com. That's cpa at sjkltd dot com. Thanks so much. And I know well, through this, as uh, you've given us, that we should be uh, maximizing our tax benefits. We should pay our taxes, but it's certainly great to maximize our tax benefits also. So thanks so much. Well, yeah. well one more question before um, we end. I was just wondering, are there any remittance consideration? That um, about the taxes. Do you mean remittance? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, say, um, are there any rem um, remittances considered donations, and what are the tax implications of the remittances? Because uh, the demographics that would be listen uh, listening to this show would probably be of Jamaican or Caribbean this uh, I interest, and so uh, we want. Can they deduct their remittance from their tax bill? Good question. Um, I, unfortunately, I, the question I would ask you first, uh, in order to deduct, make a deduction uh, as a charitable contribution, the entity has to be a 501c corp uh, in the United States. Uh, that would be the question. Are, if you're sending it home to, for example, a school, it's not it's not deductible unfortunately in the United States, but if you did don't make the donation to a Jamaican uh, entity that's a five oh one C uh corp and they send it to Jamaica, then that's that's a deduction for you. So I would urge um donors to use the middle middleman route per se and and not directly donate it to, for example, your favorite high school in Jamaica. Even though you probably could get away with it, but um that's not what the tax code says. And then the and then the five oh one C the not for profit group, they could actually give you a um like um some uh, a donation a acknowledgement. A donation um, acknowledgement, right. And then that and you would take that receipt and give it to your tax person to apply to your taxes. Absolutely. That's how that would go because I'm sure a lot of people who, who Jamaicans in the diaspora who do send a, a significant amount of money to the island, that may be a route for them to consider. How can they um, send it, get some credit for it? So we encourage people to start their not-for-profits to help out the island. Um Amen. And in, in a legitimate way, you, you're able to track the money. You you know, instead of just sending it and you don't know what happened to it, you're able to track the money. 
So this is one option um, for the Jamaicans in the diaspora, at least in the U.S. Yeah, in the, in the United States. In the U.S., right. yeah. because the protocol, um, I'm sure, is different in Canada or England or um, Africa. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, a, that's yeah. an excellent question. Thanks for um, the, the response that we know what we have a good path to maximize our tax benefits if we go to a 501C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And if people do not know what a 501C is, it means it's a, it's a not-for-profit. 501C, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a not-for-profit organization. It's not, yeah, it's a not -for -profit many, corp. And there are many Jamaican not-for-profit organizations that are around. So for the Jamaicans out there, find a not-for-profit that you are really passionate about. And if you don't find one, then create your own. And Simeon, who has just provided his information, can um, you can contact him and he'll tell you what to do. Indeed, I will. <laughs> right. Thanks again for this very, very um, content-filled um, talk, Simeon and Janice. And see you again later. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Hey. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like, Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood.